This was an interesting problem that could pop up on the Praxis 2, the math content exam, and, and it's, an, it's an algebra slash number sense um, topic. So we'll go over this problem and then probably one other. Just, I mean, they can really ask anything they want in this category, but I thought the, the two questions I'm about to show you are just, it's good to make sure you touch upon them and they are helpful, I think, in general. The first one says, for, for which of the following expressions is a plus b a factor, All right? So, so where they're gonna give you a bunch of expressions, and they say, well, for each of these expressions, here's expression a, and b is a squared plus b squared, and c is a cubed minus b cubed, and d is is a cubed plus plus b cubed. So I want to know um, for which of these expressions is a plus b a factor and what does that mean? Well that means in which of these expressions, if I factor it out, could I, could I use a plus b to do that? So first I think we have the difference of two squares, right? a squared, one square, minus b squared, another square, and what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be a minus b times a plus b. Here I'm just saying a squared plus AB minus AB um, minus B squared. So if you look at this, right, we've got A plus B is a factor. So this one works. Now we have A squared plus B squared, and I'm not gonna go too much into it right here, but this would require, right, it would require imaginary numbers. It's interesting that, that A squared plus B squared can't simply be factored out, right? Uh, and, I th and I'm guessing, like, if I, if I, no, I'm not guessing, if I was to work this out, right, I would have some form, it looks similar to, to this right here, except I think it would be, let's try it, a plus bi times a minus bi, and what's that? Well, a squared minus a bi, right, plus a bi, and then minus b squared i squared, and what's this right here? Well, that's zero. So we have a squared minus b squared i squared. i is equal to the square root of negative one, so if I square that, I get, um, I get square root of negative one times the square root of negative one, which is just negative one. So this actually equals a squared minus b squared times negative one, which in fact is a squared plus b squared. So I guess I did show that, and part of the reason of, of what's happening right here. Uh, when you have this situation, right, your factors are a plus bi times a minus bi, which is interesting, but of course not what we need here, right? We need a plus b to be a factor, so this one, uh, this does not work. And let me just clear off some of this so we can analyze the next two. Now the next two actually, um, I don't know, I, I, just, I feel like I'll... Um, I, I work in middle school currently, and, and these next two um, polynomials, right, with, with cubic uh, exponents are something I just have completely forgotten about. So I had to really remind myself of what's going on here. And, and an interesting strategy for factoring these out is just to pull out, right, to pull out a minus b or a plus b, and then multiply that by a squared plus or minus a b plus or minus b squared. And this is uh, the expanded form of this. So we have a minus b, a, or a plus b, and you can play around with these, these values. It could be negative a, it could be, you know, you can mess around with all of them, and that will help you with um, polynomials to the third power. So here we have, have this expression, right? And you notice that a plus b is not a factor. And I guess you could try and factor this out as well, but you still would find that a plus b does not, um, is not a factor of this polynomial. And last, we have a cubed plus b cubed. And uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a more efficient way. I, I just like to play around with the numbers and see what happens. And if I play around with these quantities right here, uh, eventually what I realized was that I could think of this as uh, negative 1 right? I, I, times a plus b times negative a squared plus a b minus b squared. And, and, and this works because there's a plus b as a factor. 
Um, and all I'm going to say is that to, to get to this point, to find this, I played with that form that I showed you up here, where we have uh, A, negative or positive A, minus or plus negative or positive B, and then so forth. Just playing out the positive and negatives to see what kind of outcomes I would get. And I, and I would start talking about a formula and an approach for this, but I, I think it's really important to be able to play with these numbers in case they're asking for other polynomials. Just remember how this form looks right here, and you can mess around with the values to see what you can get, and you'll be able to answer these types of questions. Another question that, that came up that I thought was interesting and at first very intimidating to me, it says, which of the following statements can be proven using the principle, the principle, of mathematical induction. And what I usually remember about induction is that if I have to find a way to say if I plug a k in, and then I can also plug a k plus 1 in, and it will still work. And in this way, you can prove that something always works, right, for, for values of k and anything above it. Because if you're picking an, arbitra excuse me, an arbitrary k, any, any variable in the sequence, and then the, the variable after that will also work in what you're plugging in, then you can imply that, that all variables will work right, for a certain set. And this is over the set of natural numbers, and that's what I forgot, or, right, or counting numbers. And I'm pretty sure that that is the only set this applies to. Um, so, so we should remember that what, what, is the nat what are the natural numbers? We start at 1 and then go up. Right by whole numbers, up to up to any valuable any value. Um, zero is not a natural or counting number, so they give us a bunch of choices and they say, well, does sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equal one, where theta is any real number, right? In other words, could you prove this for any real number using induction? Well. Um, even if I didn't understand what this meant, right, even if I had no idea what this was about, I could say no, because induction is only dealing with natural counting numbers. And the next choice, I think it's the same idea. The limit of x goes to 0, of sine of x over x equals 1, where x is an element of the reals. No, again. I can't do this here, and it is a fun and interesting proof to look at why the limit of, of as x approaches zero of sine of x over x equals one. I enjoy that, uh, and I'm not going to get into that here. But what you should focus on is that they're saying, um, in this expression, x can equal any real number. Well, natural numbers are a subset, right? They're a subset of the real numbers, but they certainly do not include all types of real numbers. So no, it's 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 beyond, I guess, the principle of mathematical induction in a way. And then we have, I'll write it over here, summation, right, or sigma notation, k equals 1, n, k, where, and, and I, they actually show you that this equals n times n plus 1 over 2, and this is where n is an element of the natural numbers. Sure, I can use induction to prove this, because all we have here is an arithmetic sequence, right? We're going from k up to some number, and we're adding all them up, and that reduces down to this form right here. So sure, I can use induction to prove this. And I think the last choice right here, I'm sorry, we would need calculus for this choice of the limit. Uh, here's a trigonometry problem. And now we have one last choice. It was the integral of a to b of f of x dx equals f of b minus f of a, where the derivative of b equals f of x and and here's the key and a and b are elements of the real numbers so even before we think about what this means in, in terms of calculus we know that we're setting up a's and b's in the reals so we're not going to be able to use induction there as well okay i hope that helped